A few videos back, I promised to talk some about electronics and all of our, uh, our custom wiring and prototype boards and all that. And uh, I'm going to do that now. This guy right here, uh, this is basically the brain for the, uh, the pressure puzzle. This little guy right here, which is what I spent most of the last two weeks working on because as we mentioned before, uh, Mark and I are primarily first off carpenters and then getting into making weirdness and only in the past year or so getting into electronics. Uh, there's on various escape room forums, there's talk of what generation of, uh, of room it is, first generation, second, third. People have different definitions of these, but essentially it boils down to how smart is the room and uh, how much it's not just keys and padlocks and maybe a couple of uh, read switches to trigger a solenoid. You have more, more interactivity, which is where you need to have a microcontroller or a PLC or some kind of computer brain that is uh, doing a lot of the, uh, the, the actual triggering and unlocking and looking for various things to be correct instead of just one key or one combination at a time. So. Um, Getting good at this is, uh, is uh, serving us well, and um, only more in the future. But this, I'm really proud of this, because everything on here does something. And now, as of like five minutes ago, it does it correctly. And uh, this is the box of failures. Let's sort through this, shall we? Uh, a lot of these are from the, uh, the main, uh, the big octagonal piece that uh, for various reasons, certain things just weren't working, some of which I still haven't figured out why. Um, uh, those of you all who have been working with escape rooms for a while are probably familiar with these little guys. They are uh, prefab relay boards. They come in 5-volt uh, coil or 12-volt coil, or I'm sure some other stuff as well, but 5 and 12 are the standards. And um, they're, in theory, relatively handy. That was already broken. <laughs> they're in theory uh, relatively handy because they're all you have your uh, your pins coming from your uh, your microcontroller, your nice screw post terminals going out to your uh, your heavier 12 gauge uh, 12 gauge 12 volt stuff. Um, in my experience, these things are garbage. Uh, I got uh, three to do this this. I needed one, so I bought three because they're cheap on this latest project and uh, after two of them failed and failed horribly uh, to the point where when you just physically tap on them things start flipping out um, yeah these are garbage uh, they come in bigger sizes uh, we got an 8 gang we got a 16 gang um, I have on this job realized I don't care for these uh, the time that you save in uh, not having to do your own wiring you lose because you have to go through two of these fails and then do your own wiring um, so these are garbage, in my opinion. Uh, speaking of don't work, uh, let's back to some of my fails. These are two iterations of the same thing. This is the, uh, the control main board uh, for our uh, the big octagonal uh, device, the main piece of this game. And originally, uh, the thing with relays, uh, real quick, is that you can hear them click. And yes, there are solid state relays that you can't hear click, but these are what you usually see uh, most often. and um, they work, they're, they're pretty reliable uh, when you don't have the uh, cheap Chinese assembled pieces of crap, uh, but they click. So when you've done something right, even if you have to do three or four things before you actually should get some kind of uh, feedback, you can still hear them clicking, and that, that's kind of a giveaway. So I went to do transistors on this guy. So this one will have, uh, I'm not sure what's going on right there. Uh, this will have 12 volts coming into it, and it's going out to... Um, Basically taking all the various pins and whatnot, and then it'll sort them over to the Arduino and then come back and fire these transistors that was then going to throw a solenoid. Never quite figured out why on this one, but uh, when I had this wired up with a 12-volt LED, everything worked beautifully. You put the four pieces in, the LEDs came on, 12 volts was obviously flowing just fine. It was wonderful. And then I went to plug it the uh, solenoid uh, into here, 12-volt solenoid. And immediately there was this crazy voltage drop and uh, to the point where the solenoids were now only getting about 3 volts and not firing. So what I'm going to end up doing on this one is going back to the um, uh, transistors. And I'm going to have the transistors fire a relay, fire a solenoid. It's kind of circuitous, but uh, I've used this uh, uh, in conjunction with another relay pack that, I've, that I put together, and uh, it works. So because it works, I'm going with it. Here's one of Preston's. Um, we don't have a lot of video on this, but uh, Preston, uh, in his spare time, um, a lot of spare time, more than he thought, I think, 
uh, has been working on a uh, puzzle that kind of replicates the old uh, kind of board game from the uh, 80s called Mastermind. Google that if you're not familiar with it, but uh, basically doing an electronic light-up push-button version of that. So he's got that's actually why he had these and this guy here with ma massive numbers of pins and all kinds of shift registers. And um, he learned a lot working on that, what he should have done. And uh, I learned a little bit from watching out of his shoulder what he should have done and occasionally offering good advice, usually just asking dumb questions. This little guy's got an X on him because I cooked him at about uh, 10 o'clock last night while trying to get, uh, get to this one. Uh, I've done some stuff uh, before. These little guys here, these are cheap. So I have loads of them, fortunately. This is a uh, DF Player Mini from DF Robotics. Uh, it is essentially a, uh, uh, it's got a, most of the, the physical body of it is an SD card slot. And uh, from there, you put your slot, load with your sound effects, and you can have your microcontroller talk to this guy, and it will play, play your sound effects on cue. Uh, they're fairly inexpensive. Uh, they're pretty handy. And uh, when you wire them up correctly, they work. And uh, when you don't have the resistor in there, you fry them. So when I went to go uh, on, I don't know, version 1.6 of this uh, late last night uh, to go plug him back in, I uh, plugged it in, I heard the Saw the, all the magic smoke escaping, uh, said some words, most of which were four letters or four letters with a gerund or something on them, and uh, unplugged that pretty quickly, figured out what I did wrong, and redid it, which has been, well, that's been most of today, uh, is, is sound. Unfortunately, we're going to have to leave you with a bit of an anticlimax right there. Uh, some time has elapsed, if you can't tell by the beard that I'm attempting to vainly grow. Um, so uh, that piece that I was just uh, showing you uh, in, in your world like five seconds ago is been done, it's completed, it's installed, and it works. Yay! Uh, the downside is uh, come crunch time before the install, we, we kind of forgot to film a lot of stuff because uh, we had to make the thing and, and then give people paying for it. Uh, there are store-bought things from a lot of different companies. Uh, a lot of people from the haunted house industry will sell you stuff that will, will probably get you by for what you need, but it will not necessarily have the specific things that you want for your piece, uh, such as on the uh, that main piece we just did for the uh, the steampunk, that uh, that octagon, uh, one of those wouldn't have worked because our uh, two of the sensors there were actually optical, and that wouldn't ha that was reading a difference in uh, in voltage instead of just a on or off uh, from a switch, so that wouldn't have worked for that. So. Because of that and some of the things, it did require that we actually do our own prototyping, which takes more time. Uh, it can be a little buggier on the front end, but uh, in the end, you're going to get a, a smoother, more custom, better product. Speaking of which, uh, we're about to get into doing some uh, prototyping for, uh, uh, I promised a while ago, some uh, kind of uh, on, uh, off the shelf um, ready pieces that we're making. So if you remember going back when, uh, we called it the uh, command card override uh, from the, uh, the spaceship. We're going to be doing a, uh, a version two of that one where you have uh, different cards will be going in. Rather than being purely electromechanical, this one is going to have a microcontroller so that uh, a different way, a one card put into any slot will always light up blue. And uh, you will have to figure out that the combination is blue, orange, green, red. And it will also, once you can physically get into the guts of it, uh, you can push a reset button on there so that the, uh, the game owner can actually change and customize the combination. So we're going to start prototyping that. So we'll have something people have been asking that you can just, yes, buy in a box from us, ready to go. Um, so prototyping on that one will probably be our next video. So uh, stay tuned for that. And uh, we'll get you some, uh, some shots of that uh, as it comes together. And um, I'm actually probably going to start shooting that video now, so that'll be due out soon. We'll see you then.